Hi everyone. Uh, for today's class, we'll talk about um, a topic related to the topic that we discussed last lesson. Uh, remember, the last lesson is uh, linear regression and correlation. So regression. So this one is also regression, um, binary and multinomial logistic regression. Okay. So they're they're related in a way that both of them are like part of the inferential statistics. No? So um, if in the linear regression and correlation, uh, we arrive at a model, here also we'll arrive at a model, okay? And linear regression, we arrive at a model to predict uh, Y values from your X values, right? So similarly for this one, um, yeah, we want to predict the Y not from our X, okay? But of course, there, there's uh, no, there's difference. No? So there's difference, okay? So, um, in fact, there's part here wherein uh, we'll use um, a portion in the, that part of regression, simple regression analysis. When I say simple regression analysis class, it has to do with the linear regression that we tackled last time. And also another one, which we did not tackle last time, the multiple regression, because the multiple regression uh, will be used here. Okay, let me, you know, let me, let me show you first the what is that multiple regression. So remember uh, the uh, linear regression. Uh, we want this right because this is the model in the form of equation. Linear function, right? Y is equal to m x plus b, right? That's what we want with some assumptions, and uh, we come up with this, right? So in a multiple, uh, we can also write it before I write the another. No, the one for multiple regression, because the one I will use is in is is, is in this form. Now the y is equal to a uh, a a plus b x. No, actually it doesn't matter. No, it can be a x plus b. Uh, I want to use the b here because uh, the the one for the multiple it's used here. Okay. So the one for the multiple will pattern it from the y is equal to a plus bx instead here. But these two are the same. No? The bx here is actually the mx. No? The a is the b. No? So that get, don't get confused. We just use this because you're more familiar with this. No? Uh, because in high school, no? you use this. So anyway, so I'll base the multiple regression equation from this one, a plus bx. So here, class, uh, here we have... Um, because in linear regression, we're dealing with one independent variable. One dependent, one independent. Whereas in multiple regression, one dependent and more than one independent. So you can have, you can have two or more. So your model will look like this. No? Uh, A plus B1, no? uh, B1x plus B2x. But of course, there's an X1 here because you have more than one. So let us say you have two independent variables. So B1, X1, B2, X2. Okay, so that's the model that you want to find. In other words, you have two independent variables relating it to the dependent variable. In other words, you want to use two independent variables to predict your Y variable. Whereas in linear regression, we're just using, remember in linear regression, we have three examples that we discussed in linear regression. Um, what are those? We have the uh, age glucose level, right? The age is the X, the glucose level is the Y, right? Uh, that part of correlation, when we discuss correlation, right? And then that part of linear regression, we have two examples again. And that is the number of frequencies, the X, and then the percent, are, uh, the percent of successful hunt, right? That's the Y. And then the last example, the the grade, that's the X, and then the number of words in an essay, that's your Y. Okay, so you notice uh, we have only one independent. Whereas in the multiple, you have, you have two, and you want to predict um, your Y from those two. Okay, from those two uh, variables. In fact, we can even extend this. No? We can have more than two. So we can have uh, dot that that until xn so you have xn independent variables i'm sorry n independent variables okay so this is the difference between the two the linear and the 
multiple regression. But this one, um, uh, we can refer to this as your, this thing here. Uh, we can refer to this as your uh, beta x. Na? Because later, we will use this beta x here when we talk about logistic regression. It's like, it's like part of the equation up here. Okay, here in class, we use linear function, right? So here we will use, so what's the difference between the two? Uh, we will use logistic, there's what you call a logistic uh, function. Okay, uh, which I will show to you later, not this logistic function. Okay, um, so that's one difference uh, between the two. Though both of them, yeah, uh, they're part of inferential statistics, so, but there is a difference and that's one. Okay, so another is, um, another difference is just to do with the level of measurement class. Uh, if you took up your, uh, if you took up probability before, uh, you must be aware of this level of measurement. There are four levels of measurement. Um, this is actually related to the qualitative quantitative data class. No? So I suppose you know what qualitative data or what quantitative data are. No? So, but to be more particular, uh, we can classify them into four levels of measurement. So we have the nominal level of measurement, ordinal level of measurement, uh, the interval level of measurement, and the ratio level of measurement. So usually the first two, the nominal and ordinal uh, data refer to the qualitative data, uh, whereas the last two, the interval and ratio levels of measurement have to do with the quantitative uh, data. So in linear regression, both our x variable and y variable uh, refer to the uh, quantitative data, specifically the ratio level of measurement. Okay ratio level of measurement. So, so it's numerical data. No? Um, whereas in the in the logistic regression, uh, it, uh, the, the Y is qualitative data. To be more particular, the Y is nominal. You deal with nominal. Actually, it can be ordinal also, but that is ordinal, ordinal uh, regression already, no? but which, which we will not tackle here. No? not tackle here but in the software class which is called xl stat that we will discuss here uh, okay that's some of the know which i will show to you some of the technical terms um will be shown there not the those the the ordinal uh, re uh logistic regression because when you use the software class you have to i know you have to identify what are you going to use binary multinomial ordinal based on your data you have a data right and then you will run your data using the software, but you have to I, I indicate, is it binary, multinomial, or ordinal? As, as I mentioned, we will not discuss um, the ordinal, but in the, I know, later, when I illustrate to you this using the Excel, uh, the Excel stat, um, you will see this, no? binary and then multinomial. Uh, we will only use these two. One for binary, the other for multinomial. Okay, so, so their class, so Y is uh, nominal, okay? For whether it's uh, binary or multinomial, uh, the Y is nominal data, qualitative. How about the X? The X here class can be qualitative or quantitative. So X can be nominal, uh, I'm sorry, the Y, oh, yeah, the X. The X can be nominal or ratio level of measurement. So that's the difference between the two classes, the levels of measurement. But that's why here we, we just get numbers, no? But here we'll deal with qualitative data, not only numbers. Okay, especially for the another uh, Y, no? just nominal. Okay, just nominal. Okay. Um, how do you differentiate these two? Remember, uh, we differentiated the two based on the number of what independent variables, the x. Here you only have one independent variable. For the multiple, you have more than one. You can have two or more. That's the way to differentiate the two. Now, how about this two? How do you differentiate this two, binary and multinomial? Based on the y. If this one, based on the x, um, here, based on the y. Okay, because for binary, the y is, has only two outcomes. Remember, the y here is nominal, not numbers, huh? nominal. So here we have two outcomes only. 
as in two. Whereas multinomial, you can have more than two, like three. Okay, that's the difference between the binary and multinomial logistic regression. Uh, because remember, uh, we can have data uh, which are qualitative. That's why if you have qualitative data, you can use this. But if you have like quantitative data, meaning uh, your study has to do with quantitative, you can use the linear regression or the multiple regression. Or you can use both, no? Because possible in your study, um, you have, will have both, no? You can have both models. Okay, so, so what do you notice? What else do you observe? Uh, for the Y here, since it's, uh, it's uh, quantitative data or ratio level of measurement, you have a lot of outcomes, no? Out, a lot, not only two, not only three. You have, in fact, you can have infinitely many because you're dealing with numbers. So you can have fractions, you can have decimal numbers, right, for the Y. Whereas here, class logistic regression, as in binary, we're limited to two only, two outcomes and nominal data. Multinomial, three, uh, three or more outcomes, nominal data. Where again, for the Y here, uh, infinite, can be infinitely many outcomes, no? numerical data, ratio level of measurement. Okay, class, so... So what else is the difference? Um, yeah, I already mentioned about the function class, right? Um, we can have here the, what do you call this? We can have here the linear function, here the logistic function. Okay? So I guess we can, Anna, we can go to some details now uh, to discuss this in detail. Now, what do I mean by two outcomes and what do I mean by more than two outcomes. Okay, so let's in the class. Let's proceed. Let's dive into the uh, to the content. Let me just remove the pen. So there. So yeah, that's the goal for this uh, for today's class. Uh, define logistic regression. Uh, determine the models for logistic uh, regression. Uh, determine this one is Excel stat class um, for logistic uh, regression. Okay, so let's dive in. Uh, what is logistic regression? Logistic regression is a frequently used method as it enables uh, binary variables and the sum of binary variables or polytomous variables, variables with more than two categories to be modeled. And then parenthesis dependent variable. Okay, let me explain this now. Uh, remember I mentioned about the, um, the, Multinomial, no? actually the polytimus is the multinomial. So you have here uh, more than two categories, no? the dependent variables with more than two categories, meaning three or more. Okay, so the binary, that's the, that's the binary. That's the one with the two outcomes, no? two outcomes. The polytimus or multinomial are three or more, three or more. And then you notice to be modeled, the dependent variable meaning uh, because that's what we really want to model the the y because the y is the one that we want to predict whether it's lean uh, we're talking of a uh, simple regression or the linear regression whether it's linear regression or multiple regression and the other one the logistic regression but what do we really want to model is the the y okay the y so we want to predict uh, the value the, the the y the result for y based on the, the the x data so you want to predict your y data uh, based on the x data uh, i have to mention data because data now can be qualitative or quantitative no? uh, in linear it's quantitative right but in logistic it's all it's qualitative no? um, the outcome to be more particular nominal okay or ordinal but the nominal is the one for the uh, binary multinomial, whereas the ordinal is the one for the ordinal logistic regression, which we will not discuss here. Okay, um, it is frequently used in the medical domain, whether a patient will get well or not, in sociology, survey analysis, epidemi epidemiology, and medicine, in quantitative marketing, whether or not products are purchased following an action, and in finance for modeling risk scoring. So this is what I'm referring to class when I talk about outcomes, two outcomes, well or not well. So that those are nominal, they're not numbers. So this can refer to your Y. 
to your dependent variable. Uh, for example, you're doing a research based on medical domain. Okay, and then uh, possible uh, you want to relate a, a drug, uh, the, um, for example, how uh, the effectiveness of the drug, for example. Okay, and you will know that whether the patient will get well or not. So the, the drug can be the, can pertain to the X, no? the X variable. And get well, uh, well or not well, that can pertain to the Y variable. So we have two outcomes there. And then for the X, as I mentioned, the X here for logistic regression can be nominal or, or can be quantitative or qualitative. No? So, uh, and you can even have more than one independent, not only about uh, what else do you want to relate, no? the, whether the patient will get well or not, what, what other independent variables you want to, to relate to this, uh, to this Y variable, which is whether a patient will get well or not. So it depends on your study. As I mentioned, we can have more than one independent variable for binary or even for uh, what do you call this? Even for the multinomial. Okay, because remember the basis here for classifying whether it's binary, multinomial, the y, no? the y variable. Okay, not the x. Mm -mm. Whereas in, in regression, linear regression, uh, we can classify it as linear or multiple based on the x variable, the number of x variable, not the y. Okay, so that's why the focus here is the y. No? For the logistic uh, regression. So another is this one, no? whether or not products are purchased following an action. So this can be an example of binary also, because here are two possible outcomes for Y. This can be your Y, no? purchased or not purchased. Okay. Then you can relate it to other, to, to, to um, one or more than one independent variables, depending on your study. No? And in finance, um, for modeling risk okay so now the principle of the logistic regression model is to link no, the occurrence or non-occurrence of an event to explanatory variables so when we say in a class um explanatory variables that's uh, also right it's also the same thing as um the x no x variable remember in the last lesson uh, we mentioned that the explanatory variables are just the same as the the independent variables uh, the x okay so this event has to do with the y the y okay the y uh, meaning uh, if it's binary two outcomes if it is uh, multinomial uh, three or more outcomes and then here class in the logistic regression we're after with the probability okay uh, because in linear we don't talk about that right we don't talk about probability we just talk about the, that's another difference here class now with, between the simple regression um, analysis and the logistic regression analysis. When I say simple regression analysis class, I'm referring to either the, the linear or the multiple. Huh? It's just that uh, we're used to linear only, you know? linear regression, because that's what we studied. That's what we focus on uh, last lesson. But actually, uh, as I mentioned, there's also multiple regression. So both of them, you can call it simple regression analysis. No? So in the simple regression analysis, uh, the focus there is um, not the probability, right? It's more on the the, the y value, okay? Uh, the y value, predicting the y value based on the on the on the x value. Whereas here, class, our focus is in the probability uh, of occurrence, no, or non-occurrence. Because the occurrence here can be the, uh, because the, the event is the Y, right? So this can be your two outcomes, no? Occurrence, non-occurrence. Okay, just like the well, not get well, purchase, not get well. So what is the probability like that, that, uh, that this event will occur given these explanatory variables? The explanatory variables can be one only or two or more, okay? So... Given those, what can you see about the probability that this event will occur or this event will not occur? Or what's the probability that the patient will get well given this drug? No? Uh, for example, you can have a lot of drugs. No? Or if you want to test about the type of drugs, that can be your X. Or you can, you can base it on the amount of the drug, that can be your X. No? So 
what's the probability that a patient will get well if you use this drug? Something like that. What's the probability that the patient will not get well if you use uh, this another drug? Okay, so the idea is like that. Uh, actually, um, everything will be cleared now uh, when we relate it to a software, the software, no? and um, we use a data um, uh, and then run it on a software. No? Okay, the, but the data here class that uh, I will use, that I will use here in this class, uh, I'll get it from the website also, no? because, but of course, in your study, in your research, based on your research, no? the data, just to illustrate, no? just to illustrate how to use the, how to run the soft, how to run this data on the software and come up with the results based on Excel stat, stat because that's the software we're going to use, right? Okay, so let's proceed. Um, so models for logistic regression. So logistic and linear regression belong to the same family of models called GLM, generalized linear models. So in both cases, an event is linked to a linear combination of explanatory variables. That's what we do, right? Even for linear regression, that's what we do in the form of equation, uh, meaning uh, y is equal to mx plus b. So y is the event is linked to, so that's the mx plus b, linear combination of explanatory variables because x is explanatory variable. So mx plus b, even in multiple, no? Remember in multiple, we have y is equal to a plus uh, b1, x1 plus b2, x2 plus dot, 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 uh, a sub n, x n. So we, we're really relating y to x, no? That's the goal. Uh, even for logistics, that's our goal, no? It's just that now, uh, you know, it's not linear function, but logistic function, which I will show to you later how it looks like, no? the logistic function. So it's also an equation, but it's called logistic function. If in linear regression or in simple regression, whether it's linear, no? Whether it is linear or uh, multiple, um, okay, so we'll, we'll, I know, we'll, um, uh, we will use the linear function. Actually, it's linear because of the degree, no? not because of the number of variables. No? Because we're used to, when you say linear function, two variables only. But we can have linear uh, wherein you have more than two variables. No? Because the degree, because as I mentioned, the word linear has to do with the degree of the variable, the exponent okay, of the variable. Okay, class, so uh, later I'll show you that, the logistic uh, function. Now, for linear regression, the dependent variable follows a normal distribution. This one uh, mentioned, but not explicit, not explicitly, you know, like in the assumptions. Now, when we discuss about linear regression, this is mentioned under assumptions, you know, the normal. So the point here is that uh, your dependent variable follows a normal distribution. Actually, this one should be, uh, this one is population mean, right? Um, so let's use this uh, instead of this, probably this one, population, no? standard deviation. We use Greek letter, right? So where u, mu is a linear function of the explanatory variables. So again, we link the mean to the, to the explanatory variables. Okay. So now uh, let's have an example here. Uh, for example, the last example, I mean, uh, the examples we used in the last lesson uh, for example, the, the glucose, right? Glucose level and the age. So which one is the dependent there again? The glucose level, right? So the glucose level follows a normal distribution. That's the assumption. Our assumption is that. So if you have a lot of data, for example, if we have a lot of data, data of uh, we have the age and the glucose level, uh, the assumption, it, it will follow a normal distribution. When you have, uh, when you say a lot, meaning big data, no? it will follow a bell-shaped curve, no? When you graph them, a bell-shaped curve. So that's the assumption there, now. And then also the other examples, the, this is the number of chimpanzees and the percent, are a percent of successful hunt, no? So which one is our Y? The percent of successful hunt, right? So also that, no? Uh, our assumption is it follows a normal distribution and also the last one um, which is the uh, grade and the number of words in an essay no? so the why there is the number of words in an essay so we assume that uh, if you are dealing with big data it will follow a normal distribution as well okay so now how about for logistic uh, for logistic class it's not normal anymore no uh, instead uh, the dependent variable still dependent follows this binomial distribution or Bernoulli 
just like normal class now, uh, we will discuss, uh, though we discussed this already, but in the next lesson, it will be mentioned again when we talk about uh, random variable and probability distribution. So this is an example, as I mentioned uh, in the lesson regarding statistical computations part two, uh, I mentioned that this is an example of a continuous probability distribution or a continuous population distribution. Whereas Bernoulli uh, or the binomial, an example of a discrete Okay, discrete uh, probability distribution or the population distribution, which we will tackle um, next lesson. The difference between the discrete and the continuous no? in the next lesson. So for now, uh, what our, our focus is that the dependent variable, or the y for the digital regression, follows this distribution, Bernoulli binomial. But I can mention to you some uh, some details here, no? Um regarding binomial and binomial. That's why it's binomial, no? So we're, uh, we are dealing with two, two outcomes also, just two outcomes, that's why binomial. Okay, whereas in binormal distribution, uh, we know that it's, it's not just two outcomes, right? In the normal distribution, because in the normal distribution, we're dealing with uh, quantitative data here, no? So we can have um, infinitely many outcomes for the Y. For this one, since we're dealing with, by, uh, because we're dealing with binary, right? So this one is used for the binary, uh, binary logistic regression. So two outcomes. So let us, let's say, um, um, to differentiate this, this two, no? because Bernoulli class is also binomial, but the only difference is that uh, for Bernoulli, the experiment is repeated once. For binomial, uh, repeated more than once, like uh, a number of times. So for example, the experiment has to do with uh, tossing a coin tossing a coin. Uh, what are the possible? Two, only two outcomes, right? Possible, head or tail. That's why it's an example of a binomial experiment. No? Uh, tossing a coin, two outcomes only. No? Um, when you toss it once, that will give you Bernoulli distribution. That's the meaning here. No? Uh, experiment is repeated once. Then that's that's a uh, Bernoulli distribution for parameter P. Okay, so binomial, you toss the coin more than once. It can be three, four times. Okay, what is this P? P is the probability, it's to do with probability. That, uh, remember, uh, head or tail, right? So the pro as I mentioned, logistic regression, focusing on the probability of the occurrence or non-occurrence of the event. And that event is associated with the Y, which is nominal. So P is the probability that, uh, uh, that an event will occur. For example, there, that, a tail, a, a head will occur. Okay, so that's uh, in a tossing uh, coin, can be P is the probability that head will appear. Then the one minus P, because we, we were talking only of two outcomes, so the other probability is one minus P. Because remember, um, the sum should be one, right? Uh, just like in normal distribution, uh, because all the outcomes are there, so when you add all of them, it will be one, right? The area under the curve, because the probability in the normal distribution is the area under the curve, right? It's the area under the curve. So um, uh, that's where we can talk of probability when we relate the uh, the linear regression to a normal distribution. But we're, whereas here class directly, no, uh, the, the model that we will have will give you the probability already, no? the probability this logistic uh, function. Okay, so, so that's the difference between the two. The probability parameter P is here a linear combination of explanatory variables again, uh, because P is associated to Y. So remember, um, our model, we associate Y, we link Y to our combination of, of the independent variables, also called explanatory variables. Okay, class, so, I think that's enough um, detail. Now, the most common functions used to link probability P to the explanatory variables are called, yeah, that's what I'm mentioning now, the logistic function, which we refer to the logit model and the standard normal distribution function, the probit model. Uh, actually class in the Excel stat, this will be shown now, actually four, four of them will be shown there. Uh, logit model, probit model, uh, what else? This this one, log log function, and then the compared function. But of course, we will not discuss each of this now 
the time is not enough. We will focus only on the logic model because it's the one that's the one I will illustrate also using the software, the logic model. Um, in the software class, you have to indicate what model will you use. That's why you have to indicate there. You have to click it, not in the software. You have to click, uh, you, you have the options. So you click logic model only because that's our focus. Now, if you're interested with the you know, software, you can study the other models now, where to use them. Okay, but our focus is only there because we're limited with the time, no? Okay, so logic model. So what is this logic function? uh related to the logic model so it's this one okay so this is the this is the equation now, now if you use probit then this is the equation this is the like the model no? complementary this one comforts this one but again let's just focus here no? now this beta x remember i mentioned this at the beginning the beta x so this is the one with the b1 x1 b2 x2 and so on and so forth depending on the number of independent variables you have so this beta x is inside this it's this one no? represents the linear combination of variables including constants um the constants there is the no, no, the b1 b1 b2 b3 and so on and so forth okay because remember in logistic regression we can still have more than one independent variable for example if you have binary uh binary binary logistic regression remember binary you have two outcomes two outcomes for your y you can associate it with or link it with one independent variable or even more than one it can be two three and so on and so forth depending on your study what do you what does your study want to do to uh, to uh, to establish no? okay so actually later we'll have concrete examples of this no? based on the data that we will get from that website okay but of course in your future research based on your data based on your and on the question of your study of your research no? and the hypothesis remember the methodology no this part is like part of the anal ana uh, analysis of data no? that part of the analysis of data uh, this thing here that we're studying now, the logistic regression, or even the linear regression, the correlation, or even those things that we studied about measures of uh, descriptive statistics, all of them. Now, it's just that the measures of descriptive statistics, descriptive. Now, if you use the linear regression or logistic regression in your study, then you're doing inferential no? statistics for your study. And you can do this both. No? In fact, you have to use both of them no? uh, for your study, not just... Uh, both of them can help in your study no? not just descriptive no or not just uh inferential no both of them you have to you have to use them in your research okay class so 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 that's it no uh now the knowledge of the distribution of the event being studied gives the likelihood of the sample so this event again is the why uh, this distribution has to do with the one we discussed a while ago about the binomial remember the y assumes the the distribute the binomial distribution remember uh, we talk about that whereas in the the y for the linear regression assumes the follows a normal distribution okay and that's a very important assumption class no? for these models to work okay so uh to estimate beta parameters of the model the coefficients of the linear function we try to maximize likelihood function okay so contrary to linear regression an exact analytical solution does not exist no so in linear regression remember um we were able to get the values of m and b manually and using software right the excel uh, but there we get an exact because we have the formula and also the software we get the, because the, the software is based on the formula and those uh, formulas for m and b based on the remember the assumptions that we mentioned what is what, what is one of the assumptions that's a, one of the assumptions has to do with the normal the normal distribution mentioned here no? and other assumptions there there's something like linearity remember those assumptions for the for that model and also remember what method did we use least squares method Okay, so which we did not anymore discuss there, not because it will require time. So probably you you googled it, na. Okay, so the least squares method. Whereas here, class, we don't use the least squares method. That's why we cannot get that, and we cannot use that, not the least squares method, because the least squares method work for the quantitative data. Instead, here we have qualitative data for the y. Though Rx can be qualitative or quantitative, right? 
So we, we have to use another method and that is has to do with the maximum uh, likelihood function. Okay, so in the XL stat class, um, to achieve this, this algorithm is used. Iterative, iterative algorithm, which is, to be more particular, newton raphson algorithm. And then uh, to execute this algorithm, you have to indicate this in the in the no, in the soft in that no, software. No, in fact, again, uh, sometimes uh, you don't have to put this; it will be there. But there are times, depending on your study, you have, you'll be the one to indicate the maximum number of iterations and the convergence threshold. Now, I cannot explain this no, no, in detail and the importance of this. But um, again, if you're interested, you can uh, get this manual no, of this XL stat. And uh, hopefully this will be explained no, there. In fact, um, the other parts here regarding the technical terms uh, can be explained more in that manual. No? Uh, what I can do only based on the given time is just to uh, no, establish the foundation for this topic, no? uh, which I've already done some of uh, more of it no, at the beginning no? or in the previous slides. So. So to proceed, so I won't go into this anymore. Uh, what's important, uh, yeah, this one, the multinomial logic model. The multinomial logic model, so that course, So we, we know this already, right, the multinomial. So here we have uh, three or more outcomes for the Y, three or more. Later, uh, on the data that we have later, you'll see there the example of, particular example also of like, uh, as in complete data, no? Uh, it's not big data, but at least complete, no? um a three or uh three actually three outcomes only now we don't have the four no three outcomes only but we also have two outcomes there now okay so has a different uh parameterization because the dependent variable has more than two categories now from the logic model again class when you see logic model here though both of them are logic models it's just that if it's not stated it's understood we're referring to binary logistic regression no? um Okay, so, so as I mentioned in the software, uh, when you run your data through that software, uh, you'll be given options. No? You have to choose your option. Is it multinomial or logit? Something like that. I'm sorry, multinomial, binary, or ordina uh, ordinary. No, there's ordinary also. No? Uh, or ordinal, I'm sorry, ordinal. Um, okay, so you, that will be another. That will be. Uh, that will be another required of you to indicate, no? To indicate. Uh, because the response variable has more than two categories. It focuses on the probability to choose one of the J categories, knowing some explanatory variables. So one of the J categories, meaning uh, this has to do with the, the Y. And the explanatory variables has to do with the X. So it focuses on the, as I mentioned, uh, when you say logistic uh, regression, you're focusing on the probability probability okay um, this one is general now because uh, you can talk you're talking of multinomial eh? not only two okay uh, multinomial so one of the j categories so you can have like three categories right three one of the three categories or one of the four categories no? to choose knowing some explanatory uh variables because that's the idea of regression right uh you predict we hear uh, the probability that's what we want to predict the probability uh, no, uh, given those these explanatory variables. Whereas in the linear regression, um, we want to predict uh, that particular y value no? based on the given um, uh, values, no? values of the x variable. If it's linear, one x variable. If it's multiple, you can have two or more uh x variables whereas here class in the uh logistic regression we're after with the probability of that y of the y not the value of the y but because we don't have value of y here because the y is nominal as i mentioned qualitative that's why we just talk of probability okay because probably we want number so to come up with a number for the prediction we relate it to probability Okay, but of course the probability will be limited, no? Because if you're talking of two outcomes, you can, you only have two probabilities, no? Probabilities. If you're talking of three outcomes, then you can have three. Okay. So, 
So there. Um, okay, let me proceed. The analytical expression of the model is as follows. So again, this one is related to the one we showed a while ago, the logistic function. It's related to this, no? To this one. Uh, by the way, class, this EXP here is the E that you know of. E is a number, irrational number, like just like pi. Pi is irrational number, right? Three point something. E here is, uh, if you use your calculator, it's two point something. So this one is E raised to. So this is exponent beta x. Exponent. E raised to beta x. Okay? So remember, uh, exponential and logarithm are opposite, no? Opposite. Uh, that's why you notice there's a P here. There's an E, but there's no log. Because this one is, you can change it to log. You can change this to log. Just do, do uh, no, algebra manipulation. And then uh, come up with all those with X, with E, put them together. No? And then you can change it to this. To this form, log. Okay, so anyway, I don't want to discuss that more. Uh, so you notice there's alpha j na? plus beta j xi. Okay, so this is like the dependent, uh, independent variable. And then you have here the what? The, in, the dependent variable, the y. So what's the log of the probability? Uh, yeah, p, because p is the, the probability, right? Um, for the y equals j, the y equals j, the outcome given this. The xi here class is the, has to do with this, no? The independent variable. And then the, the here class, um, because in the software you have to choose the reference, not you, sometimes it's the, no, no, you can do, you can choose, but uh, you can let the software choose for you, your reference. Uh, or control category. Actually, it doesn't matter, no? Uh, you can, you can, um, you notice here, class, there's a one where the category one is called the reference or control category. So you notice uh, you associate the categories or the outcomes with numbers, no? For example, if you have two, two outcomes, uh, for example, well, not well, you can have well, the one, not well, zero, like that. Okay, so but, not but. Uh, but one zero not but okay uh, that's what we're talking here now the category occurrence one non-occurrence can be zero so uh, in the software um, though we have this uh, like on, uh, for our data we have this like label for our data right uh, well not well uh, but in the software it will assign a number zero one if you have three outcomes zero one two if you have four outcomes zero one two Three, but uh, for this to work, for this model to work, uh, 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 one category should be chosen as control. That's why it's called control category or reference. But again, uh, it doesn't matter which category to choose. You will get the same result. Okay, so that's why uh, it's okay. Just let the software assign for you. Okay, uh, you don't really have to indicate. It's uh, unlike the other class, right? Um, remember the once you run it. Well, run your data using the software, uh, you'll be asked, you have the option, is it binary, uh, multinomial, what will you, uh, what do you want to do? Binary, multinomial, or denial? Okay. You have to indicate, is it binary, multinomial, no? that's important. And also the model, right? Is it probit, uh, logit, and the other two? Okay, but again, uh, just logit, no? because that's the one uh, we're studying now. Logit model. For this one class, the category, you don't have to, but there's an option there also if you want. You want it the zero, the one, the two, you, there's an option, but it's not necessary to indicate, no? to indicate. Meaning you don't have to click it uh, because there's uh, all you have to do, class, when you do the software, just click, no? choose an option, no? oh, okay, click it. No? That's all you have to do. You don't have to do any computation, no? you just uh, uh, click it. As long as you have the data already. No? the data, okay? So all obtained parameters have to be, in, oh, that's why very important because all this reference or control category, because all obtained parameters have to be interpreted rel relatively to this reference category. Okay, the probability to choose category J, the Y, remember the Y, 
is this given by this okay so you notice you have now the no more you notice no more log what you have now is the exponential na? because they're opposite na? they're opposite but in the ano, class in the software they use this na? this was like like, like the equivalent na? the equivalent okay um given the xi no because the xi class is the independent variable remember uh you will predict the the probability of the occurrence of or the non-occurrence of that dependent variable based on the what on the independent variable so okay so that's why we have this equation is equal to the exponential uh, e raised to the alpha j alpha j plus uh, beta j x i okay divided by this okay i don't want to go, to go into this one uh let's now let's proceed to the next one so for the reference category we have okay this one the model is estimated as i mentioned uh, uh not least squares method no? unlike in the linear regression least squares method but for the for this logistic regression uh estimate only no using a maximum whereas in the uh, in the linear regression exact analytical solution that's what we get the value that we get for m and b exact whereas for this model uh what we will get is only estimated the values of our constants are only estimated okay the a the b1 the b2 be estimated in fact we don't even have to compute for it uh the the software will be the one to estimate for you and the model is using this method maximum likelihood method uh using the newton rapson algorithm uh we're in uh we're in there you have also options no? sometimes it depends on your study you have to indicate the number of iterations because it will affect this maximum likelihood no but uh there uh, but actually if you don't indicate the software will be the one to choose for you that's why in your study it's important that you know what number of iterations do you need okay otherwise the software will be the one to uh, to choose for you okay so the log, log likelihood is as follows okay again i don't want to go into the detail of this um actually um this one uh, can be explained more in the other i don't know uh, powerpoint based on the uh, that i don't know web that youtube you know, youtube channel if you have time no? otherwise we'll just focus on this okay so to estimate the beta parameters of the model oh, as i mentioned no? the coefficients of the linear variable, we try to maximize the likelihood function Okay, uh, just like in binary, no? also in multino multinomial. No? Uh, contrary to linear regression, exact analytical does not exist. No? Uh, just like, like what we mentioned no? when we talk about binary, no? uh, of, of course, multinomial is also logistic regression. That's why it's again mentioned here. Excel stat uses the Newton Raphson algorithm to iteratively find a solution. Okay, so some results that are displayed for the logistic regression are not applicable in the case of the multinomial uh, case. Okay, class so now uh there's confidence interval actually uh we have this this now we can see this in the results no uh, but i cannot discuss this more about this one the confidence interval uh it needs a lesson for this no the confidence interval um okay so the calculation of confidence interval for parameter is as for, for linear regression assuming that the parameters are normally distributed Okay, Excel stat also offers the more reliable alternative profile likelihood method as it does not require the assumption that the parameters are normally distributed. Okay, because this one we did not discuss this eh, in the linear regression, the confidence interval. Uh, but if we, we use another software there, like a more advanced, or even this software, you know, if you use Excel stat for that linear regression lesson, uh, you can also see you know, uh, this you know, because we only use the basic. You know? The Excel, so we do, that's why we don't see this confident interval. But if we run our data on the Excel stat um, uh, to, to come up with the linear regression model, then there are other results that will sh be shown. No other results like this confidence interval, and this one later we'll, we'll see this also. We will see this now because we will use Excel stat then, uh, in confidence interval for logistic, not for linear. No? Okay, but again, the basis here is that um the confidence interval based on the not because it's not normal no based on the um, profile likelihood no 
Okay, the likelihood method. My class, so anyway, uh, let's proceed. So Excel stat results for logistic regression. So most of these technical terms now you will see in the uh, software. So let me just uh, uh, some of it. Excel stat can display the classification table. So we'll see this later now, the classification table, also called confusion matrix. Okay, when we run our data through Excel stat, used to calculate the percentage of well-classified observations for a given cutoff point, typically for a cutoff value of 0.5, if the probability is less than 0.5. The observation is considered as being assigned to class zero, otherwise it's assigned to class one. So you notice zero and one, because the zero and one here are the outcomes for the Y. And then remember we associate the outcomes for the Y to probability. Okay, so the probability um, 0.5 if the probability is less than 0.5. Otherwise, it's assigned to class one. Okay, you'll understand this better in the, in the class in the, in the in the example, hopefully, <laughs> if we can illustrate. Uh, the ROC curve is also there, displayed also. No? The ROC curve, uh, receiver operating character, displays the performance of a model and angles a comparison to be made with other models. So the terms used uh, come from signal detection theory. The proportion of well classified positive events is called the sensitivity. When you say positive events, have to do the, the X and Y, okay, no, I mean the Y. The specificity is the proportion of the well classified negative events. Okay, I, I, want, I don't want to discuss that more. Okay, again, this one, you can see this in the, no? in the results, no? in the example. Correspondence between the categories of the response variable and the probabilities. The response here is the Y. Uh, categories, these are the zero, one, no? uh, which are qualitative. No? Um, qualitative. Uh, zero, again, can be the uh, non-occurrence. Y can be the occurrence. Or uh, zero can be not get well. One can be get well. But uh, later, we'll see examples of other categories, no? not only those no, no, that I gave you already, uh, based on the, that website. Okay, and the probabilities, okay, because that's what we want, the probabilities of this. So this table shows which categories of the dependent variable have been assigned probability zero and one. Zero and one. Okay, summary of the variable selection. Okay, so where a selection method has been chosen, Excel stat uh, displays uh, selection summary for stepwise selection, the statistics corresponding to the different steps are displayed where the best model of a number of variables varying from P to Q has been selected. The best model for each number of variables or number of variables is displayed with the corresponding statistics and the best model for the criterion chosen is displayed in bold. Okay, again, we'll see this in the uh, example. Goodness of feed coefficients, uh, we'll see this. Now the total number of observations will be there. And also this, the sum of weights degree of freedom and this one. This R squared class has to do with the lesson, uh, that the coefficient of determination that we discuss in linear regression. Remember, it's just that we use small letter there, the R, the person, person uh, coefficient of correlation denoted as R. The coefficient of determination um, denoted as R squared, but just small. Uh, this one for the logistic regression. No? In fact, we have a lot of coefficients here. No, uh, We don't use here person because person deals with numerical data. Whereas here we deal with what? Qualitative data, the, the, especially the Y. But the X can be qualitative, quantitative, as, we, as, as I mentioned. That's why we have to use a different coefficient. But we have a lot here, no? Uh, McFadden, <laughs> uh, coefficient of correlation. No? Uh, the linear regression, it's called what? Pearson's coefficient of correlation. And just like the linear regression, um, the coefficient of determination, no? Okay. Um, the coefficient of determination uh, for the linear regression uh, between zero to one also, right? Because the uh, person's coefficient of correlation are negative one to one, right? Negative one to one. But here class, we only talk of R squared, not the R. Okay, but you notice same zero to one also, just like the coefficient of determination in linear regression. So aside from McFadden, we have Cox and Snell. Okay, so Nagel, Kirk, and so on. We'll also see this, but I don't have time to discuss this in detail. So I just uh, want to focus on the, uh, and then uh, on the on the example, no? but the details, if you're interested, you can refer to the manual or Google this more. No? Anyway, uh, test of natural hypothesis, again, I don't want to go into the detail of this. We, we can see this also in the results. No? 
uh, uh, type 2, ano? not, not type 3. I think this is an error, typographical error, not type 3, type 2 analysis. And then, the, yeah, the model parameters, uh, remember I, I mentioned to you, you have to indicate is it binary, multinomial, or ordinal. Okay, but again, since we will not discuss ordinal, so we do not include ordinal here. But in the software, you will see that in the options, no? binary, multinomial, ordinal. Okay, uh, if, if, you, if your data deal with binary, you can use binary or multinomial if, if your data deal with binary. But if your data deal with, you know, with multinomial, you have to click this multinomial because the result will be different if you click binary because your data is multinomial. But if your data is binary, it doesn't matter whether you click binary, multinomial, same result, but not, don't click ordinal. No? You don't click that. Uh, for binary, uh, if you have binary, meaning your data deal with binary, then you can click binary or multinomial. But since you know it's binary, why, why don't you just click binary? No? But for multinomial, if your data deal with multinomial, then click multinomial only. You know? Don't click binary. So don't make a mistake there. No? But for the binary, it's okay to make a mistake because it will work. Both of this will work. No? Same result. Okay, so I, I don't want to... Okay, uh, in the result, you will see this, uh, the chi, the chi. Actually, this is another distribution class, no? another probability distribution called chi distribution, just like normal, Bernoulli, binomial, uh, which we will tackle some details also in the next lesson. Probably the chi also. Uh, we'll see if we can discuss some details on this one in the next uh, lesson. Okay. So this model equation is uh, that's what I want to show to you, no? When I when I show to you this, the the Excel stat, the software, no? The model equation. So again, in linear regression, we're after with the y equals mx plus p, right? So for this one, we're after with that logistic, now the one with the e. So we're after with that. So that's the one. The good thing about this Excel stat class, it will give you the equation already, no? Unlike the the Excel that we use for the linear regression uh that excel no uh individually we have to use find the m and uh, individually no separately and the b and then input into the equation whereas in the excel stat uh, i suppose also no in the excel stat if you use the uh, excel stat for the linear regression you don't have to do it separately no uh it will give you the the y equals mx plus p immediately no? so similarly for the logistic no it will give you this immediately the model. So that's what I want to show to you later. Uh, but the others I cannot discuss in detail, but this one will be shown to you also in the um, uh, in that example uh, later. Okay, but again, I cannot discuss into the detail anymore. I cannot discuss the detail. So just expect that we will see, you will see this. Nah? This is why I suggest uh, you register also, download it so that you can go back to this module again or this PowerPoint presentation uh and uh, do independent study and hopefully if you have like uh, uh after the last lesson if you have another free session meaning uh, we have another session where we will meet where and we finish all the lessons already for this course then we can uh, now we can go back to this no? and then but before that i suggest you do your independent study no? and i think this lesson this this another uh, this session is a motivation for you to do that okay so so there also this no? probability analysis table will be shown there okay so it's not yet the end but i'll show you i'll share you i'll share with you now the what i'm talking about okay so i'll show you two excel the excel with no downloaded uh excel stat and excel file with downloaded because uh, that's what i uh, know will happen and if you download it to your laptop it will ha have two icons now one icon for the excel where you, in there's no um excel stat okay let me show you so this one is it this is it this one uh i think i already put the uh, nah, wait let me just uh, nah, let me just correct it okay for a while uh let me just put this uh i'll create another sheet here and then yeah so okay let me show you now okay let me show you that okay um wait so here it is so this one and 
uh, for your class. No? This and this. So I'm sharing three now to you. Okay, so here. Can you see it now? I, I can see it on my screen, but I think it's different. No? Uh, it's a different Excel that I'm showing you. Not this, not this Excel, but this one. Can you see this now? This is the one I sh share sharing to you. Okay, so this is the one I shared to you. You notice there's no Excel stat. Uh, uh, follow the arrow that where I'm pointing at. There's no Excel stat. Now, let me show you the other Excel where there is Excel stat. No? So there, did you see that? Let me go to home first, the home. So, so if you notice the same, no, not the same here if you're, you're at the home. But since there's already Excel stat, so if you click this, uh, it will uh, it will show to you the what's in the Excel stat. What can you do? You can prepare data. You can describe data, visualizing data, analyzing data, modeling. This is what we need, the modeling data. So you notice you have here the uh, linear um, uh, regression. I don't know if you can see it. Uh, if I click this, the one with the Excel stat, uh, I click it now. You can you see here the linear regression, the logistic, and so on and so forth. Okay. Anyway, uh, let me uh, let me go to another to, another, to the website class where we will get the data because we need the data here, no? Okay. Let me show you that uh, that website. Okay, in that website class, we can also use it uh, to get our linear regression, logistic regression, or, or even correlation uh, uh, online using that website, not only using software. But of course, the software is more complete. But again, there are technical terms that you have to, uh, you have to navigate, explore, study. Uh, uh, sometimes, uh, or most of the time, the, the one in the uh, easy to understand uh, in the online the website so let me share that to, to illustrate my point uh, where is that mm -hmm. so wait class let me just change the uh, the tab uh, the tab is not shown so let me sh change the tab there and then go to this website so so there so let me share it now Um, where is it? Wait, class, I can see it here. Ah, oh, there. So now I'm sharing four, four windows to you. Can you see it now? No, I think not that because what I'm seeing on my screen is the Excel. So where is it? Where is it? So there. So I'm seeing now on my screen the website. No? So I suppose you're seeing it also. So this is the website, uh, data tab, data tab net. No? Okay, so this is the data given already na, here. So what you can do, export, import, na, uh, like that. So I want to copy this. Na. Let's do that. So copy table and then go back to the the one with the Excel with the Excel stat class. Na. So not this. I think I'm showing to you the one without Excel stat because it won't work here. Na. Uh, you have to go to the to this one. Okay, and then um, let me uh, let me make this bigger, no, so that it's easy to let me let me make it two hundred percent, and then copy. Uh, I already copied it, right? And then I just paste it here. So there, so there. Did you see it? Uh, so you notice, class, we have different variables here. Now we have the gender, the salary, the age, the place, the weight, the company, academic. No? Now you can choose your dependent, independent variables here. You can choose here, no. So again, uh, for the logistic, uh, can you also uh, no, no, you can also apply linear regression no, here, uh, because in the Excel stat, if you will look at it, um, the modeling data. Uh, I'm not just sure if you can see the uh, no, no, if there's a down because I already click it. I'm not uh, because in my screen I can see the down the uh, no, no, the content, so I'm not just sure if you can see it on your on your end, um, uh, the content of this. Uh, modeling data so we have here the linear regression no? but since uh that's the last lesson we'll not do that instead the logistic regression there's actually a lot here eh? when it comes to modeling data there's a lot mentioned here eh? we have the distribution fitting linear regression ANOVA and COVA so those are like lessons to be studied pa. repeated measures ANOVA mixed models so what we studied so far here the linear regression and the logistic regression okay uh so again in the logistic regression 
uh, uh, if you click this, let's try. I, I'm not so sure if it's gonna work. Yeah, the problem is it's not working. Eh? Though in my in my other class it it, it works. No? Uh, so uh, let me just explain first. Eh, no? So here, class. Uh, remember for the logistic regression, our dependent variable y nominal, nominal, right? So you can use this variable for your nominal, for your y. This can be your y. Uh, how many outcomes do you have here? Two. So binary. You can use this uh, y y data for your binary, no? because fem female male. But for multinomial, you have three, right? Three or more. So you can use the place for your y. Because here you have three outcomes, Chicago, uh, New York, uh, Washington, right? So for multinomial. Uh, for company, yes, also, because we have three outcomes, BMW, Ford, uh, what else? GM, so three outcomes also. Academic degree also, no? for your Y, possible. Again, class, for logistic, whether it's logistic or uh, linear regression, no, Actually, I prefer to call it simple regression because when you say simple regression, it's either linear regression or multiple regression. No? Um, you have to choose the, uh, no, right? The Y should be the one with uh, no, uh, quantitative data. Okay, the one with quantitative data. So for the linear regression or multiple regression, you have to choose salary. The Y can be the salary, the age, the weight. Okay, but since our focus is on the logistic, so for the Y, we have another Y, possible Y, y is the academic degree because you also have your three outcomes, no? multinomial. So no bachelor, master. Okay, so three. Okay, so now for the, the X class, remember for the logistic regression for your X, it's either quantitative, qualitative, or nominal or ratio level. So if this is your Y, your X can be your X can be the salary, right? So, but it's binary, no? So when you use the, no, the modeling data and then logistic regression as your way to model the data, uh, you have to click binary, no? As I mentioned, if it's binary, you can also click multinomial, right? So it doesn't matter. But just click binary, no? Because this is binary, it has to do with binary. And then the, the, the independent, you can choose one or two or three it doesn't matter in fact you can choose all of this one two three four five six no right one two three four five six you relate the gender to this six independent variables you can do that because for the logistic right for the logistic uh it can be qualitative or quantitative right so so as um, I forgot to mention, so whether it is a uh, simple regression or logistic regression or linear regression, multiple regression or logistic regression, you only have to choose one Y, one Y. Uh, meaning uh, you cannot choose gender and then place for the Y, only choose one. Similarly for the linear regression no, or multiple uh, regression, uh, but of course, the only difference is that for the Y, you choose the one with quantitative. So you choose only salary or age. You cannot choose both. But for the independent, you can have more than one, right? For the independent, whether it is, um, uh, whether it is actually for the, no, for, the, for the linear, only one. For the multiple, two, right? But for the logistic regression, uh, you can have one, two, three, and so on and so forth. Okay? As long as we just make sure your Y is only, you choose, choose, choose only one variable. Choose only one variable. Okay, uh, let's, uh, I want to try the Excel stat, but the problem is it's not working. No, that's the only problem. Uh, logistic regression. So I don't know. Probably my, my trial has already ended, but it should be shown here. Uh, or probably I have to, uh, okay, anyway, let me show you the uh, class. If you have remaining time, I'll try to fix this, but let me show you the result first. Now, if we do that, this can be the possible result. No? For example, I choose the gender and the salary, no? the gender and the salary, just the, for the binary, 
uh, binary because the gender two outcomes. Then I'll just use one independent variable. But for binary, I can have two or three or more, but still binary. Uh, multinomial, uh, it's based, based on the Y, right? So I can use Y for my place, and then I can choose any of the, for my X, no? I can have one or more. Okay, let me show you now, the, uh, because we're running out of time, the results. Um, this one, uh, I haven't shared it to you yet. So let me share it to you now. Uh, um, so I think this one. Uh, not the website, but the, where is it? So this one, can you see it, class? It's on my screen now, but I think you see something. Uh, it's vacant now. Okay, uh, let me, so you see, yeah, there. Did you see that? The result. So this should be the result, no? So you notice uh, until the trial expires 14. Probably my trials are ended already. So anyway, this one, I already produced this result in my, in my other classes no? last week last week classes so um so you notice here no uh last week no um march 14 no march 14 so there so you notice the response variable no and then yeah because this one has to do with the the data that i showed you no this data this data okay so uh, meaning, um, where is that? Okay, this one refers to that. No? Um, okay, so 12 rows, one column. Uh, because the response variable, I just, okay, the response variable, uh, that, that uh, no, uh, I think I chose the gender, no? the salary and gender, no? salary and gender. So this salary here and gender. No? So you have here one column and then consider only the 12 no? because the gender salary, the title, no? the column title. So you have like 12 rows, no? 12 rows and then one column each. No? That's the meaning here. Uh, that's the meaning here. No? So this is like annotation. No? So that's why I'd like to show it to you because you have to, you have to, uh, uh, you have to highlight it. Eh? It's just that something is wrong with the software now. Probably in the next class, I'll illustrate it again. Uh, I'll just fix it, no? I'll just fix it. So because this is another, you have to input this, eh? or you have to highlight. It's either you uh, just like in linear regression, right? Uh, when we use the Excel, we highlight it, right, to input the data, or we write it. It's either highlight or you write it, no? So this one, that's why this one is mentioned, no? Highlight because uh, there is a sheet, and then uh, A1 to A13, A1 to A13, meaning the rows, no? B1 to B13. That's the one we use, no? Anyway, uh, response variable. So that's the one binary. We choose the binary, not the multinomial. Actually, for the binary, you can choose multinomial, but I think just to make it consistent, just choose binary. Now, if you're dealing with multinomial, put here multinomial. It's just that something is wrong with the software. So I could have illustrated to you uh, the, the options. No? So uh, since I chose this, that's why you can see this in the, no? in the result. No? The model, I also choose this, the logic. No? I click it um the algorithm uh, uh it's there already so i did not do that uh, this is the convergence that i'm talking about no? uh, this one i did not uh choose anymore it's just there but you can choose you can put the number of iterations also here no even for the confidence interval the tolerance and the cut point remember this is mentioned in the powerpoint the cut point 0.5 okay so uh, i don't have time to refer back eh? to the, uh, the PowerPoint. Anyway, we're running out of time. So uh, what, what's the good with the software class? It will also show you the other correct, the other, uh, no, the other measures. No? You notice you have the standard deviation, the mean, uh, for the salary. No? It's even computed for you, but you did not ask for it, but it's given. Standard deviation, the mean, the maximum, even the descriptive measures. No? The, what do you call this? The, um, the measures of dispersion are here, oh? the maximum, minimum the measures of uh, dispersion, the measures of central tendency is here, right? And the gender, this one is another variable, the qualitative data, remember? This is the Y. We want to predict uh, the well, the probability that it's female, something like that. Okay, uh, let me, you know, remember this one is shown in the, you know, in the, what do you call this? In the PowerPoint, but no need to discuss each of this, but you know, you know, it's there, no? It's here, what's, okay? So anyway, the test of null hypothesis also. I, I don't have, no need to. I don't have time to 
discuss this. As I mentioned, it's type 2, not type 3. And then what I want to show to you is the, uh, the chi-square probably next time if we have time, uh, next lesson. Okay, this is what I want to show to you there. Did you see the model now? The model, probability that the gender is equal to male. This is the one used. This is the model now. So if you want to do it manually, you can input the salary here. You can get the, the salary of that male, uh, the salary that you want to predict, whether that salary corresponds to the male or male salary or female salary, something like that. But of course, this one depends on your study. No? It, has, it has to make sense depending on your study. And then it will compute the probability to you. You can do it manually, but of course, the, the software will be the one to give it to you. So there. So you notice the predictions and the residuals are also here. The one mentioned in the PowerPoint, but I, I cannot go into the detail because I still want to show to you the website where it will give you the result also. No? Other than this. No? Okay, anyway, uh, last one. Let me go back to that, Anna. To the website this that's the last one this one this is what i want to show to you class that uh you can also get the the result online okay uh is it i'm not working okay there there uh, okay this is what you do class now this is interesting uh because okay um dependent you can choose here no you don't have to highlight anymore you don't have to write it uh this website is for that purpose for convenient for convenience Okay, uh, as I mentioned, we can choose um, dependent variable only one, whether it's linear or regression. The only different uh, linear, uh, simple regression or uh, logistic. The only difference for logistic, you have to choose the nominal. Okay, for the linear multiple regression, you have to choose the numerical data. So what I have for the nominal, the gender. No, again, I will choose the gender. That's nominal, right? For the logistic, okay, right there. Then the independent, I can relate it to salary also or more let's see if we can have more uh but let me just illustrate the uh, yeah that's the thing eh? it will give you immediately uh, the logistic regression uh gender salary no? so but five thousand no compared to the software 15 only not 50 but again you can indicate in the software if you want five thousand no? uh so there so the idea class is this one model for the prediction of female no so for example, uh, you want to predict the salary for the female, 1,000. What is the probability that the salary, uh, that the salary, this salary is for the female, this 1,000, 84 percent, something like that. So um, okay. So but the thing here is the equation. You know, you don't have the equation, but it will give you the answer already. You know? But again, from based from here, you can give, you can get it. But I don't have time to show it to you, the equation. But here, just the result will give you. For example, for the male, for example, what is the probability that, that this 3,000 salary is for the male? Oh, it will give you 76. Okay? Did you see that? Oh, let's try another one. Remember, the independent can be what? Can be, uh, can be the numerical or qualitative. Okay? So, but this only one, right? One, one dependent. You can have two or more. So, let's have salary and then another one. For example, the, the academic degree. Let's see, uh, uh, because it might not work. Yeah, it's not working also. No? Uh, it's not working. So anyway, I think I will end there. Um, I think it has to do with, I don't know, with the website also. Okay, class, so let me go back to that PowerPoint and end there. Okay, so hopefully uh, next session or in the other session, no? we'll, we'll tackle more on this. Okay, class. So that ends the lesson for this week. Thank you very much for attending. Uh, 